Time Up is an all-time classic for creating 2D games. By following along, you will assemble a rich 2D Time Up grid, built from dynamic tiles and obstacles, while learning many Unity 2D Time Up topics, such as auto tiling, collision, animated tiles, tile detection, prefab brushes, and more. Ready? Let's dig in! 2D top-down games are an excellent starting point. So, how about we use time maps to design one? I will use this ground tile sprite sheet to create the ground. If you want to download all the sprites I use or the project source, the link is in the description. I am extracting the tiles from it as we do with any sprite sheet. Now that we got each sprite separated, let's create a tile map. Tile map is a game object on which we place tiles. We can choose different layouts. In our case, this time map will match our sprites. We now got a grid game object with an attached grid component and underneath it, a tile map object attached to tile map and tile map render components. To draw tiles on the time map, we will need to convert these sprites into tile assets. We open the tile palette window and up here create a new palette. We can now drag our sprite sheet into it. This will automatically create tile assets, which I will save in a new folder. Let's select this tile, and by using the paintbrush tool, we can draw it on the scene. Our tile size is off, so let's select the sprite sheet and adjust its pixel per unit to the pixel cell size number we set previously. We can simplify the drawing process by using the box fill tool or dragging over multiple tiles to paint a bunch at once. We can also use the picker tool to sample a tile at the scene. But even with all these options, our quickest way to paint the tiles is to use auto tiling. To use auto tiling, we need to create in our project a new tile rule asset. I will name it ground. To it, we add all the different sprites we want to be defined in the rule. I will also set its default sprite, so that when I drag the tile assets into the palette, I will have a visual for it. I am painting it on the scene in advance, so we can see the rules come into effect. To set them, we click inside the grid sections. One click for green arrows, meaning the tile is continuous. Two clicks for red X, marking the tile's edge. We can take it even further by changing some of the outputs to random and giving the tiles option to choose between different sprites randomly, making our tile map look less boring. You can check out the project source to see how I set my tile rules. Again, the link is in the description. A common problem when using tile maps is the gaps shown between the tiles. To fix it, we create a sprite atlas to drag the sprite sheet into. Currently, the player can move freely in the scene, and it is time to change that. We will create the tiles we want to have a collider on on a different tile map. Be sure to create a new tile map under the grid object. There is no need to create two grid objects. Before you paint the obstacle tiles, be sure to paint them on the right tile map. We can easily switch between them using the active tile map tab. We will also need to set for the tile map a new sorting order, so its tiles will be rendered above. To our two tile maps, I will add a thread dedicated to the level's water. I just find it more manageable working that way. We use the tile map collider 2D component to add colliders to all the tiles on the selected tile map. If we add or remove tiles, the collider will update its shape. Though, you can see each tile has its own collider shape. Performance-wise, we should add the composite collider 2D component to combine the shapes of neighboring tiles. Be sure to set the added rigid body to the component to static and check the colliders used by composite box. Unity created the colliders based on the shape of the tile. We don't have a problem with some of the transparent tiles, but we will need to modify the physics shape of these tiles. So up we go to the textures custom physics shape editor and edit these tiles physics shapes. I'm using the copy paste option to speed things up. On the way, I will give the character a smaller collider and place it in the same sorting order as the obstacles. 
now. It's much better. Well, now we can stand in front of the fence, I would like the option to stand behind it, to give the illusion of death. For that, we will use sorting by y-axis instead of z. This way, the higher the assets on the screen, the furthest behind it will render. Depending on your render pipeline, open its rendering preference. Set the transparency sort mode to custom axis and switch the z and the y values. At the obstacle style map renderer, set the mode to individual. The chunk mode is better performance wise, as it bunches the tile sprites together when rendering. But the individual mode will render each tile individually. Tweaking a bit the fence custom physics shape and adjust its pivot to bottom, and now it works for us. To make it even more accurate, we can change the character pivot position and set its sprite sort point at the sprite render to pivot. This may set off the character's collider, so update it if necessary. What about big obstacles, like this house? We can separate its tiles into two tile maps and place the roof on a higher sorting layer, but I will recommend using a regular sprite instead. To paint the sprite to align with the grid, I will first create a prefab from it with a nice collider and change the tile palette brush to a game object brush. We open up this section and add the prefab. On the way, I will add a few three prefabs to the scene. Once we are done, we will need to remember to change the brush back to default if we want to paint with the other tiles. To make our level prettier, I got these flora tiles. Adding this transparent flora tile to the background tile map replaced the ground tile. If I wanted to add them to the object tile map, I will first need to disable their colliders by going to each tile asset at the project and setting its collider type to none. With this, the tile map collider 2D component won't generate from them a collider. Unfortunately, placing them on the object tile maps render them individually. So, I will create a decoration tile map for them. Now, look how nice our level looks. Let's juice the level up by adding animated tiles. We create a new animated tile asset at the project window. And I can drag these frame by frame animation sprites into it. We need to add the new asset to the tile palette to paint it in the scene. If you find the animation too slow, we can return to the animated tile asset and change the minimum speed. Note that we can also animate tiles part of a tile rule by changing the output to animation. The final addition will be adding some bushes to stomp. This brings us to scripting. We can add the tile bush to a separate tile map and give it a tag while going to our script and using the compare tag method. But, just like with the big obstacles, I recommend using the prefab brush instead. It's easy to use and gives us more options with less work. While we are at it, let's cover some good to know tile map methods, such as the set tile method. With it, we can place a tile at a specific tile map and position. Do not confuse it with the swap tile method, which we used for replacing all tiles of one type with another. Last, we got the word to cell method to translate a position in the game to a grid cell position. 